So to set up the scene for this one, I just got an icosphere with five subdivisions in the center, pointed my camera at it and up the focal length. Then in the shading tab, I just have my 3D viewport and my node editor here. And then I'll go ahead and switch to object. And here you can go to the rendered preview. And I'm using the Cycles render engine. You can use Eevee. The material doesn't use any displacement, so it works in both. And then you can just check this, uncheck this scene world here. And I'm using the built-in force, HDRI, for the lighting. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and press new. I'm going to type in candle wax for the name. You can name it whatever you want. And then the first texture we're going to be adding is a noise texture. And that's going to be used to mess with some of the mapping and vector stuff. So with this selected, I'm going to press Control and T, just like this. And we're going to leave this on the generated output today. We're not using object. At the end, I'll show you some things you can do with the object if you want it to vary that, but it looks better with the generated texture coordinates. So now I'll go ahead and preview this. This is just going to be used as a uh, vector warper, essentially. And to do that, we're just going to hit Shift A. We're going to search for a mixed RGB here. And then we're going to plug this factor into color one. And then we're gonna plug this vector into color two, just like this. And we're gonna leave this on 0.5. So we can see this is sort of just warping the main generated texture coordinates texture, which is what we want it to be doing. Oops, and I'm hiding these. So then the next thing to do is we're gonna separate the X, Y, and Z so we can make the mask for where we want the wax to be and how much and how far is it dripping down and things like that. So I'm gonna hit Shift A and search for a separate X, Y, Z node here. I'm gonna put that right in front of this mix node and plug them in like so. And then if we preview our Z coordinate, we can't really see a whole lot that's going on right now, but it's sort of, there's a there's gonna be a gradient from the bottom to the top, but it's sort of worked because we're using this noise texture here. Like if we plug this in instead of that, we can see that there's a perfect gradient, but if we plug this one in, we can see that it's sort of staggered. Anyway, now that we've done that, we're going to separate this and definitively using some map range nodes. So we're gonna hit Shift A and search for a range, map range right here. I'm going to have this in Shift D, which is gonna make a duplicate. So I'm gonna plug this Z coordinate into the value of both map ranges. Then this top map range, we're gonna leave on default settings, which is just gonna be this. Then this bottom one, I'll go ahead and Control Shift and left click to preview him. We're going to be switching the from minimum value to a 0.4 like this. So we can sort of see everything coming up. And then this from maximum value to a 0.41 like this. So we can sort of see. So we get sort of a very constant gradient here. Or it's not really gradient anymore, but you know what I mean. So to adjust this um, uh, easily, more easily, I'm gonna hit shift A and search for a math node. Switch both these values to zero and then hit shift D to duplicate. Then I'm gonna go ahead and change these bottom values to the same as the from minimum and from max. So this one's a 0.4 and this one's a 0.41. Then I'm just gonna plug these guys into their values and then hit Shift A, search for a value node here. And this is going to allow us to adjust everything with one slider so I can up the mask or I can lower the mask depending on how high we want the wax to be falling. And as you can see, because we're using this noise texture, it's not a perfect um, uh, mask all around. It's sort of warped like we're seeing and if you don't like how warped it is you can always change the factor if you up this factor it'll be less warped and more flat and if you lower it it will be more warped and eventually just a noise texture but i'm going to be leaving it at a 0 0.5 0 0.5 and between 0.5 and 0.75 i found are what looks best anyways now that we have our main mask we're going to be combining these two together so i'm going to hit shift a and search for a mix rgb here and put that up here then i'm going to take this result into color two and this into color one. And if we preview this guy, we can see that it's not doing what we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this color blending mode here to darken the factor to a one. And we can see that it's still not exactly what we want because this guy is sort of inverted. So we're gonna hit shift A and search for an invert node just like this and put it in between. And so now we can see that the thickness of the, essentially what this is saying is the thickness of the wax on top is going to be thinner than on the bottom because on the bottom, it's sort of like weighing it down and that's why it drips in the first place because you can see it sort of beads up towards the bottom and so this invert node is just basically saying for our wax to be doing that with the mask anyways now with that explained i'm just going to grab all of these guys i'm going to move them a little bit out of the way just so that we have some more room i'm going to grab this one and move them up here as well
And now I'm just going to be simply creating the wax that'll be used in the mask. So I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to search for a Musgrave texture here. And then we're actually going to be wanting to stretch this on the Z coordinates. So to scale this on the Z, we can hit Shift A, search for an extra mapping node here like so. Take the previous mapping node into the vector. And then on the Z, we're going to change that value to a 0.1. So if we preview this Musgrave texture, we have this right now. And if we plug this vector in, we now have it stretching on the Z. It's sort of hard to see a difference right now, but we'll make sure that's more defined in just a moment. So on this Musgrave texture, we're going to be switching from FBM to Rigid Multifractal. So we get more of the wax type shapes. Then we're going to switch the scale to a 10, the detail to a 4. And then we're going to switch the gain to 200. So what that's going to do is it's going to make the lines a lot thinner. And then to further up the contrast between these so it's not too blurry, we're going to hit Shift-A and search for a map range node again. Place that right afterwards. Then this from max value, we're going to bring it all the way down to a 0 0.025. And that's going to take everything into account here, and it's going to look pretty good. Then we're going to come over here to the lacunarity, because we can see that it's sort of blurring, and that's not really how wax would drip. And we're just going to switch the lacunarity to a 1, so it's more solid. Then because we want this to play into the bump, we need to have these colors inverted. And so the white needs to be, because white equals height. And so we need to hit Shift A and search for an invert node here. And then that's going to invert all of our colors. But as we can see, we don't have the gradient from the top to the bottom, or and it's affecting the whole thing, which is why we have the mask previously built up right here. So then we're just going to combine these. We'll hit Shift A, search for a mix RGB, plug him here. I'm going to take this color into color two. This color from the darken into the factor and then color one to a black so if we preview this guy now we can see that we have a gradient from the top to the bottom so the beads get bigger down there and we also have this control where we can extend the wax and subtract it and it sort of gives us these nice patterns here i'm gonna leave it on a zero or actually i'll leave it on 0 0.1 for now so we can see the difference in the camera view so now we're going to plug this into the bump so i'll hit shift a and search for a bump node then take this color into the height and switch the strength to a 0.25 and plug that into our normal here. So if we control shift and left click, we can sort of preview what was going on and it's looking pretty good. And I'm actually going to take all of these nodes here and I'm going to grab them and move them under the bump node just so that they stay out of the way while we're working on our roughness. So this node right here is super useful. It's also going to be factoring into the transmission because the wax gets a little bit, uh, transmits a little bit of light through it when it is um, uh, sort of dripping and wet. So we're going to hit Shift-A and then search for a math node here. I'm going to switch the function here to multiply. I'm going to take this color into color into the value 1 and then leave the value on a 0.5 and then drag this into the transmission. And that's just going to make it a little bit uh, translucent so that you can sort of see through it. Not a whole lot though. Now I'm going to take this transmission roughness and bring it up to a 0.5 just so that it's not like perfectly clear depending on what we do with this. So then this next step, we're gonna be plugging stuff into our roughness, and this is gonna be a mask for that. So we're gonna hit Shift A, search for a mix RGB up here, like so. And then I'm going to press Shift A again and use a, mul a math node, which, and then switch the function to multiply again, just like this. And then take this color into here, Currently it's like this. This is going to be the mask for our roughness. I'm going to switch the value to a 2 so that we get more contrast between them so that the wax has a defined difference. So then this value is going to go into the factor. So then for the roughness on these guys, all we have to do now is we're going to be adding a noise texture in to give them variation and then a couple map ranges. So will hit Shift A and search for a noise texture just like this. We're going to take our original mapping nodes vector and plug it in. Then, on this noise texture, I'm going to be using a scale of 50, and I'll control shift left click to preview. Scale of 50, detail of 8, and roughness of 0.75. Just so we can sort of make it a little bit blurry, but still have some contrast in here. Then we're going to hit shift A and search for a map range node. I can place them right after the factors here, and I'm actually going to control shift and D to duplicate them so we get a different roughness for the wax and the dripping wax, respectively. So on this top map range, we want it to be our um, uh, main wax, not the dripping one. So I'm going to switch this to minimum value here to a 0.1 because we want the minimum roughness to be a 0.1. And then the maximum roughness, we're going to be switching to a 0.25, just like this. Then we can simply take this color into color one here. 
Then this other map range, where we want the minimum value to be a zero on the dripping, and then we want the max to be 0 0.1 or a 0 0.2. You can, I'll leave it at a 0 0.2 for now. Obviously we can switch this later if we feel like it. Then we'll take this map range into this mix node here. And as you can see, if we preview the mix node with control shift and left click, we can see that it's sort of blending them all nicely and the wax is less rough, it's more smooth, which is what we want. Then we can simply take this guy and plug him into our roughness. So now if we preview what we have going on here in the viewport, it's starting to look pretty decent. And this next step is going to be factoring in some little bit of bumpiness to the non-dripping portion. And that's pretty simple as well. I'm just going to take these guys and grab them, move them up here, and I'll take this noise texture down here because we're going to be using him. So I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to search for a mix RGB. We're going to use this guy as our mask again, but we want it to be a more constant value. So I'm going to press Shift A and search for a math node again, and I'm going to switch this to greater than on the function. Then I'm going to organize my nodes a little bit better again. Just grab all of these guys and move them over here. Then I'll plug this color into the value of the greater than. Control shift left click to preview. And if we bring this value down, I'm going to bring it all the way down to a 0 0.05. So we can see that we have a clear black and white mask now. Then on this mix node, I'm going to take this value into the factor, change color two to a black, and then we can see so we can see the difference better. So we don't want to be affecting the black at all. Then we'll take this factor from the noise texture into color one. And that is going to give us some bump. So now we can just press Shift A, search for a bump node here, like this, and it's sort of in the way because all my nodes are a little bit messy. We'll plug it into the height, then plug this normal into the other normal, and switch the strength to like a 0.1. So if we preview this node by itself, we can see that it's sort of giving us sort of the waxy effect that wax actually has. Then we add this one, we have the dripping wax. And then together, they make sort of this pattern. So then this last step is adding in the color, which is really, really easy. We're just going to come up here. I'm going to press Shift A, search for a noise texture. Take this vector from the original mapping into the noise texture vector. Control Shift left click to preview. I'm going to up the scale to a 20 and the detail to a 10. Then just Shift A, search for a mix RGB node here. And then plug this noise texture into our factor. And then these colors, we're just going to switch to candle wax colors. And I'll give you hex values for these. On the top value, I'm going to be using in F3, E3, C2. Again, that is in F3, E3, C2, just like that. Then this color 2, I'm going to be using in F8, D, A8, 2. Again, that is in F8, D, A8, 2, just like that. Now we have our colors, and we can plug that into our base color. So now if we preview our principal shader, we can see that we have the finished material in here. And real quick, I'll just go over some controls for you. For the color, if we want to switch that, I'll hit Shift A and add a hue saturation node just in between here. Now we can change the hue of everything really easily, values, etc. I like the original wax color, so we're going to be using that. And then for roughness, if we want to up the roughness of something individually, we can come in here to these map range nodes and do that there. Or we can press Shift A, search for a math node, and then switch these values to zero, plug it in between the mix node and the roughness, then we can up it as a whole, or decrease it as a whole, etc. Then we have these bump controls, we can change how bumpy we want things to be. Same with the transmission, we can lower this to lower the transmission value, or up it to increase the transmission value. Say I wanted to put this at like a 10, make sure you check clamp on this. And now we have, it's perfectly trans, transmitting the light, and obviously that's bad, so I'm going to move it back to a 0.5. But yeah, those are the controls. And remember, as always, you can change the levels of the wax. You can change how high you want it to be. You can also change the scale. You can even change some of the values in here a little bit with the Musgrave texture if you like. But yeah, that's just how you use the material. And hopefully you have enjoyed this tutorial and can use it in your render without looking too difficult. I'm going to go ahead and put this on a cylinder just to show you what it looks like in the viewport on an actual candle-like shape, like you saw in the thumbnail. So I'm going to grab this and move it on the X here. I'm going to just going to right-click and shade smooth. Then I'm going to scale it, shift D, Z on the Z, so we have this sort of candle shape. Then I'll copy it, move it over a little bit, make it maybe look, make it maybe, maybe make it a little bit shorter. 
and then we'll move this guy here we'll make this one a little bit thicker and then also a little bit sh shorter like this so cool we have three materials now then i'll select all these guys select him press Control and l link the materials and then if we go to rendered preview again this is without making any adjustments to the material and once the viewport samples get up a little bit we can see that we sort of have dripping candle wax on all these and it's looking pretty good on all of them and this is all without any extra geometry added i literally just added these cylinders just like you saw and this is looking pretty good for a really simple candle wax material to go in your renders so hopefully you enjoyed this and i'll hopefully see you in a future tutorial um, adios.